Hey, welcome to this radio video and this is the continuation of our series of videos on digital signal decoding and listening using FLDG software which is one of the best pieces of software around. Uh, it's not the only one, there's a lot of different uh, programs and um, actually I for a long time I used MixW, M-I-X-W, which is a uh, not a free program, but it lets you use a program uh, anyway, even if you don't pay, but um, hopefully if you uh, use it, well, might pay the fees. Uh, FLDG is totally free, and uh, if you haven't seen the first video on where to get it, how to install it, and configure your microphone input, then I suggest that you look at that video. Second step when you will uh, use FLDG is to hook it up to your radio. That's probably what's uh, a little difficult for a lot of people, understanding where do you hook up the uh, radio to your computer and how. First of all, one word of uh, importance, if you want to decode uh, digital signals, your receiver needs to be an SSB receiver. So you need to have single sideband uh, like this Texan PL600 for example as SSB written here. Um, it could be uh, any portable receiver if you're using your portable receivers as long as you have a SSB button on it that you can actually uh, use like this one here, SSB. Um, be it a portable like uh, my ICOM which of course has SSB mods or my uh, ICOM 8500 that you've seen that has of course USB LSB which is single sideband. Now uh, some radios put SSB which means single sideband it's a, the general term but some, some radios will have USB and LSB separate um, because there are in single sideband signals what are upper sideband signals, lower sideband signals. So uh, you gotta check that. And if you have anything that looks like SSB, LSB, um, USB, or CW written on a button on your radio, then you should have what it takes to actually listen to a digital signal. The second thing that you'll need and that is probably not included is the little piece of wire that hooks up your radios to your uh, computer. Now most radios use the standard I believe it's a 1 8 uh, jack and uh, it has to be 1.8 jack on both ends. Almost all radios will use this type of wire. It's basically the same type of uh, wire. If you have an, an iPhone, an iPod, it's the same size of plug, actually. Um, you see here it has only one little black uh, line. That means this is a mono cable. It's not stereo. And there's nothing stereo on shortwave uh, except maybe DRM. So uh, a mono cable is going to be okay. Um, if you have a stereo cable, it should still work. Um, I've tried it a few times with another cable I have at home, which is a stereo cable. And it works really well. Uh, there are qualities in cables. And um, one of the biggest problems you'll encounter while hooking up your radio to your computer is computer noise going into the radio. And that's uh, probably the major issue. If you have a big professional receiver like uh, my ICOM um, ICR8500, for example, that you've seen on many, many videos I have online, th that's not an issue. The radio itself is shielded, so, so well shielded against interference that actually there's very little that gets in the radio. Um, but on little portable receivers, that's a different issue. So if you plug in your wire and you see that your uh, signal indicator just goes to the top and you just can't hear anything anymore, 
then you might want to have first of all a good shielded cable like this one this one is a real uh, shielded cable uh, where did I get this well this is a very old wire of mine it's a, a wire that I had with my first uh, digital decoding uh, software way back when I had a Commodore 64 so if uh, anyone out there is old enough to remember these computers um, when I had my Commodore 64 I had ordered a SWL cartridge that would decode CW and RTTY radio teletype and had a lot of fun with that and it came with this wire and I always kept this wire because it's one of the good ones that I've seen uh, shielded enough so that it uh, prevents interference um, if you have interference from the cable going into the receiver and that is going to be probably a major problem for a lot of you that have portable receivers one of the things that you might want to do is get yourself a uh, tor toroid core as we call which is basically a um, donut type metal core and uh, what you'll want to do is actually um, just wind your wire a few turns around that core and um, that will actually lower your interference quite a lot um, I'll try to show you a uh, toroid core Here we go, show you a little something about it. It looks like what's on the upper left. And um, it's basically a, a kind of a special metal magnetic type core. And what you want to do is uh, actually put your wire, uh, do a few turns of wire inside the core. Uh, a little bit like this, there's a, an example here you see. So by doing uh, a few turns in that toroid core, you should actually um, get less interference. Um, what would I suggest if you still have interference or it's still too heavy? Um, I've done with a portable receiver. Um, what you can do actually with a portable receiver is uh, maybe if it's too difficult to uh, do a live reception of the signal you might want to record the signal uh, and after it's recorded use the sound of that recording to decode your signal and what's cool about that is that if you can decode uh, right from the start well once you get the hang of it and have that signal you can actually rewind and play the the, uh, the digital signal all over again so that could be a good idea if you have too much noise if it's really unbearable and you just can't work it out uh, then uh, actually use a little recorder uh, and uh, record that signal uh, lots of uh, cool little uh, rip mp3 recorders uh, are available and uh, these mp3 recorders are really cheap now an example of an mp3 recorder is uh, for example my little Olympus recorder this is an mp3 this you uh, can record your digital signal on it hook up the little wire to the uh, earphone jack here into the computer and uh, decode from there so if you have too much noise then this is a great way to work around it uh, second of all once you have that famous wire uh, or third or whatever order <laughs> you will need just to hook it up between two little jacks uh, one is the famous um, input, microphone input of your computer. So on a laptop like this one, for example, if I turn it around uh, and we look at what's available on this uh, laptop, you'll see that on the side right here, it's not very easy to see, but on the side of my laptop right here, I've got two little jacks. So one of them is actually a uh, earphone jack and the other one is an input. In my case it's the one that's a little farther from the uh, edge here. So this one is my microphone input. So the first thing is you have to find your microphone input. 
If you have a tower, it uh, probably is a pink, uh, a pink input. Uh, lots of computers have colored inputs, and the pink input is always the microphone. So you'll want to enter your wire in that input, like here. And second of all, you'll want to, once it's you, you found your uh, input, you'll want to put it into the output of your radio. Now, depending on the radio, um, it can have a line out. If I, for example, check this receiver, the uh, Grandig G5, it actually has a line out. So you might want to use this one, the line out, on the radio. And if you don't have a line out, then simply use the uh, earphone jack. Now, the earphone jack, if you use that, what's going to happen is that you won't hear the audio of the earphone jack. And that's, the, uh, that's where in your uh, FLDG software, the playback must be set right in the uh, configure and sound card so that you can hear your sound of your computer. Um, of your radio in your computer's speakers if you use the uh, uh, of course the um, earphone jack because plugging a wire in your earphone jack actually blocks out the uh, blocks out the, uh, the the audio from your radio itself so that's gonna be something to check for and uh, most radios well every radio that uh, you will buy that has a uh, a um, SSB, all, they all have an earphone jack that you can just plug into. And so hopefully you'll be looking something like this and uh, you're going to be uh, using the earphone. Now, how do you know if it works? And that's the biggest question. Look at my FLDG window right here. If you look at the bottom, it's kind of yellow. When no sound input is there, you should see something like either a black, dark, or something like a light blue colored waterfall. If you uh, hook up your wire, it's probably dark like this one. Once you hook it up to your radio and turn on the radio and put the volume up if you have a uh, volume knob if you're in the uh, earphone you should actually see this recording you should actually see the uh, waterfall turn yellow why because the yellow portion of the waterfall means that there's some sound input so uh, that's pretty cool it means that something's working it means the sounds going in and so uh, this is one thing that you uh, might want to check. On your uh, computer. To make sure that it works well, you should see this uh, little uh, waterfall. Now in my case, if I look at the uh, signal level, it doesn't seem to actually uh, send a lot of um, interference into my radio. So uh, by using this cable, I actually have pretty good reception um, conditions, even though it's uh, plugged to a computer. So that's the first thing. You might want to try, uh, if you can, want to see a little something. You can tune into a medium wave station and uh, put your SSB signal on, which uh, will give you, for example, here if I tune a local AM station, put it in SSB mode, and here I put a tone. If you plug it in by putting my tone, you can see that the uh, the signals there and you should see spikes, red spikes that show you the different tones of the receiver. 
So um, that's a great way to actually check it out. So hook it up. Um, if, if something happens when you put in your uh, wire into the jack and you see that the waterfall turns uh, yellow or red, then you're halfway there. What you want to have is a sound level that's strong enough to actually trigger a light yellow display. But you don't want to have a red display. If it's, it's too strong, the full display is going to be overloaded and that's going to be kind of bad. That's not what you want. Uh, you want to have hopefully light yellow with a possible um, display of uh, some red lines for example on a signal. So that's the first thing. I hope uh, I, it's a little hard to explain sometimes but uh, I, I hope you understand what I want and um, basically you will uh, also if you have a professional receiver I have a record out on my uh, ICOM so you can use a record out uh, of course like I said you can use the earphone jack of any radio and just put that uh, that wire there and uh, hook it up in some way and once the radio is on you should actually see um, something happening you should see that there's a uh, change in your waterfall and uh, that's the first first thing that you might want to uh, do is just to verify that it all works well once it's there once you are there uh, then we'll continue on with uh, the rest of the explanation of how to decode a signal, we start with the easiest signal around. We'll start decoding um, a CW signal, which is a Morse code signal. Uh, it's probably one of the easy things to do. Now, you'll see how it's done in the next video. And uh, hopefully, play around with your uh, software, play around with your computer, and um, Let's hope that everything is uh, working well with that and that you uh, found the wire and hooked up FLDG to your radio. So uh, next video, we'll decode CW and you'll see how it's done. It's going to be the first signal we're going to try for and uh, then we'll start going into the real digital world with uh, radio teletype signals and, uh, and so on. So thanks for watching, hope that it's not too complicated, just follow step by step, slowly, make sure that everything works and um, hopefully you will uh, have at least the hookup done for the next video when we're going to decode CW. And what's cool with these videos on YouTube is you can watch them over and over again, so if you uh, didn't hook it up uh, for the video we're going to do about CW, then no problem, you just come back and watch the video again uh, when you're ready to uh, actually uh, do um, decoding of all these HF signals. If you enjoy, uh, hey, subscribe to our channel and um, hope that you uh, like what, uh, what I'm doing here. And uh, hopefully we're going to start together decoding all of these cool signals that are available on shortwave. Thanks for watching, 73.